Mini CNC are at DMG Mori today. I'm with Phil Morris, and we're going to be talking about Hymer products. Now, when you buy a machine like a DMG Mori, uh, you're machining probably high precision, high value components. Therefore, you need quality tooling to go with it. Um, Phil, this is about the journey of tooling here from Hymer. Uh, you've got a fantastic reputation in the market for every aspect we're going to look at today. But let's start with shrink fit. How important is it and how does it work what we have here? Okay, it's very important that if you've invested uh, a, a large amount of money into a five axis machine, you need to get the tool to perform as the best way possible. So we do this by using shrink technology. We have a 13 kilowatt coil that will heat up the holder uh, to around about 350 degrees C in about four seconds. We can then change the tool over, pop it onto the, uh, the cooling station, and we can cool the holder down in around about 30 seconds from 350 degrees C to 30 degrees at a handling, uh, a safe handling temperature. And then onto the machine, the clamping force is three times that of a collet, and also the runout is less than three microns. Okay, so this is your this is your heating element, so you pull that down, that would heat the, yes. the tool shank, and then once it's heated, when you're cooling, these are your cooling chambers, you'd take one of these off, it would go over the top of the tool, uh, whether that's the right one or not, but it'd go over the top of it, and that yep. would then give you your cooling motion. Yes. Okay, now the interesting thing here for me, Phil, is I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, I, I, you know, if you keep doing this, surely that tool's going to wear, isn't it? If you keep eating it up and it keeps contracting in size, what's the, what's the life of one of these tool holders? Well, we've recorded over uh, 10,000 shrinks in, uh, in Germany. Our apprentices do this as part of uh, their training. So we will uh, shrink and cool a holder and uh, on a daily basis, take it onto a presetter and measure the runout. Now our holders, we use quality steel, and this has uh, a, a yield point of around about 550 degrees C. The NG coil, painted the NG coil, will reach a temperature of 330 to 350 degrees. So we're not taking that, the, the material past its point of, uh, of elasticity, if you like. So we're, we're keeping this in a safe position. So if you heat and cool in a disciplined manner, the tool holder will last a lifetime. A lifetime, that's a big statement. Now this is obviously, this is a, this is a Hymer product on the tools and the, uh, the heat. Yes. We make that guarantee that if you use a Hymer holder in conjunction with a Hymer machine, then the, and obviously you don't bang the tool in any way, shape or form, then the tool will last a lifetime. Now when the tool lasts a lifetime, the key to the tools on machines like this is the fact that you don't want to, well if there's, if there's less vibration, for example if you, if you come this way Phil, uh, if there's less vibration on the tool because of run out and so forth, you're going to get longer tool life, you're going to get better surface finishes on your part and ultimately a longer lasting machine tool aren't you? Absolutely, uh, we want to protect the bearings on the, uh, the CNC machine as much as possible. Now, we can do that in conjunction with a balancing machine. Uh, all of the Hymer holders are balanced to 25,000 RPM, uh, up to from the gauge line to the top of the holder. So we know that from that point, we're safe. Now, the spindle on a machine uh, has a, a, a value of 2.5 G, and we don't want to exceed that. So we set in the parameters of the machine uh, that the maximum value that we want to go to is 2.5, the maximum RPM of the machine, and then we can set about balancing this tool so that we can stay within that range. Okay, so let's put this tool back in here. So now once this tool is in here, let's say it is out of balance, how do you go about then balancing it? Do you... uh, there are three ways to balance the tool. We can either add mass by there's these carefully weighted screws that we add once we go through the cycle of balancing. The machine will then tell us where to put the, 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 weight, the correct weighted screw in order to bring about a correct balance. That's one method. Another method that we can use on, on longer um, overhangs on tools is using um, balancing rings. Now these can withstand an RPM of around about 50,000 revolutions per minute and they pop onto there and again the machine will tell us where to do that and also we can take mass away by drilling uh, within the holder 
to okay, balance now, it out. Once the tool is balanced, then let's move on to the final part of this presentation. Um, you need to you need to set the tool. So, Heimer, uh, your tool presetters are very very popular. In fact, you're you're a world leader in this technology. Yes, um, tell us about this process. Well, this process, once we've got the the, the tool shrunk in and we've balanced it so it's in the best position it can be. We need to get an accurate geometry for the tool in order to uh, put it into the machine as quickly and as accurately as possible. We can do this in one of, one of three ways. We pop the tool in, now we've got a couple of spindles that we can use. We have a standard spindle and we also have an, our Super ISS spindle which uh, copies the same amount of clamping force that would be on the spindle of the machine. So and that's around about 20,000 newton metres. So once the tool's in there, we auto focus the uh, the tool to get the uh, the correct position of the of the tool. Just pop that in uh, in its position. That will auto focus as we bring it round. Okay. And then once we've got the measurement, which is at the top, we can then send the data either through the network or through a post processor or we can print the label off and pop it onto the, uh, onto the tool. Now, you mentioned to me what, one of the reasons that you, that you guys believe that you're the leaders in this type of technology is down to the build of the machine here. Um, explain to me about the fact that you're using a, a casting as opposed to an, alum, as opposed to an aluminium base. Yeah, we, um, every customer's needs are different. Now, we'll assess the customer's needs and we, we have a, a machine that would suit uh, everybody's purpose for what they're trying to achieve. Now, we have machines that can withstand tools that are, that are of a heavier weight, over 32 kilograms, and also we have machines that are, that are smaller, more compact, and it depends really on the customer's needs. Now, all of our uh, body, inside here, the bodies are made from cast iron, so you've got a better coefficient of linear expansion in there, as opposed to using two different types of uh, materials. So uh, this keeps it uh, in a better condition with changing temperatures in the atmosphere so we can always maintain and guarantee the, the highest accuracy levels possible. Uh, this particular one's got a ball screw but you also have a linear drive motor one yeah, as well we don't do you? Linear, which, is which is on a dual rail linear uh, drive uh, and again that, that will help with, um, with speed of movement. With, we have fully CNC automatic ones where we program the presetter so it automatically identifies the tool and then once the, the uh, spindle has identified the tool and you uh, acknowledge that on the machine, the, tool will, uh, the, the presetter will automatically measure the tool and send the data. Uh, final point here, intuitiveness of this control. This is one of the reasons, again, you believe that you yeah. sell more than anybody else the, tool presets. The in interface is so user-friendly. It's so simple, easy to use. Uh, it's, uh, anybody could use this. Very limited training and repeated accuracy every time. Uh, finally, on this point then, Phil, um, finally for a second time I should say, this collective solution here, uh, the, the, the aim really is to make your tools uh, run out with, with as minimal run out so you protect the life of the machine, you get a better surface finish, longer tool life and accurate components, would that be a good absolutely, summary? Absolutely, absolutely, every time. Using these three items in conjunction with a quality machine like DMG Murray, that you can, ma you can maintain its accuracy of the tool going in, speed of, of, the, of the data going into the machine, and also you're going to protect the spindle and your, in your expensive investment. Sounds brilliant. That's from Heimer here, uh, a solution there. Everything from heat shrink, balancing, right the way to, uh, through to tool presetting. If you're after quality tooling and superb uh, component results, then uh, here's a solution. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. Thank you very much.